Hi there, today I have video number two of the sleeve fitting video series. If you missed the last one, be sure to watch it. You'll get some inside information about how to determine if the armhole shape of your pattern is going to be a good foundation for your sleeve. A good armhole shape and size is absolutely necessary to achieve a good fitting sleeve, but the sleeve must also correspond to that armhole. I'm Alexandra Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Pattern Studio and this week we're going to talk about what a good sleeve looks like and how you can assess if it's going to work with the armhole it is set to. Let's get started. So here we have a sleeve that corresponds to our basic bodice block here. This happens to be the size 8 mannequin that I have and this is its corresponding sleeve. So this is actually tested and I'm going to be showing you in the next little segment on this video what this looks like sewn up. But I did want to show you the pattern itself because I want to sort of explain the parts and how they correspond to the bodice pattern. This particular sleeve is called a straight basic sleeve and it's straight simply because when you fold it in half along that center line it's a straight sleeve everything below the bicep line. You will see though that the cap is slightly different and you can probably barely see it here but you'll see here the back side of the sleeve head is actually has more fabric. Now this extra fabric here actually allows you to have more reach in your garment so that you will have um, some more room to be able to move in your sleeve. So that's something to definitely make note. So if you have a commercial pattern and you fold it in half like this, you should see some extra fabric on the back side of the sleeve. The front side of the sleeve will definitely be more scooped, which corresponds to what is happening on the bodice. So just like last time, I did mention that the back side of the arm, armhole is always slightly straighter and flatter, and the front side is a lot curvier. The same will correspond to the sleeve. The bicep line is always located right at the widest part of the sleeve. So if you join point to point of the seam line to seam line of your sleeve, you will find your bicep line. The center line of the sleeve is always midway between each of these bicep line points and it's perpendicular to each other. So you want to make sure that you have a 90 degree angle between the center line of the sleeve and your bicep line. All of your other corresponding lines will follow that suit. So everything above the bicep line is considered the cap of the sleeve or the sleeve head. You'll find that I use those two terms interchangeably. The cap height here goes from the very top of the sleeve to the bicep line. So you want to be aware of that. The other thing that you want to take note of here is that we have notches that correspond to the bodice. So of course this is the front side of the sleeve which corresponds to the front part of the bodice. This is the back side of the sleeve which will correspond to the back side of the bodice. The length of this measurement from notch to the underarm seam from the notch to the underarm seam or the side seam should be exactly the same. So there shouldn't be any ease located in either the bodice or the sleeve below the notches. All of the ease in your sleeve head is going to be located above the notches here. So you want to have a little bit of ease in a set in sleeve like this. Not all sleeves will have ease, but for this particular style where the armhole is sitting right near your bodice and at the ball joint of your arm, you definitely need to have ease. So let's talk about ease a little bit more. And we're going to give you some numbers that you can work with that you can kind of gauge your patterns on. So for the bicep, the sleeve bicep measurement should be at least two inches or five centimeters larger than your body measurement at your bicep. This is going to give you enough ease to move your arm around in your sleeve. The cap height, you want to be approximately one third of the circumference of your armhole girth. A little bit more, a little bit less is definitely okay, but this gives you kind of a gauge or a guideline. 
You also want to consider how much ease you have in the sleeve head. So as I said, all of your ease is going to be located between the notches here on the top part of the sleeve. And it needs to be about one inch larger than your armhole circumference. So if you measure your armhole circumference and you measure the sleeve head seam line length, you should have about one inch more measurement here in the sleeve, one inch or 2.5 centimeters. Now that can be a little bit less and a little bit more for this type of sleeve, but definitely that's a really good measurement to use as a guide. So just to review, you want about two inches or five centimeters of ease in your bicep. You want about one inch or 2.5 centimeters of ease in your sleeve head to correspond to an armhole that you know already fits quite well. Now there are some other considerations that you do have to make. You also want to consider how wide your cap is here. So I've just drawn this little guideline about halfway between the bicep and the top of the sleeve, so halfway between your cap height. And you might even want to draw this on your muslin to determine if there is enough width on your sleeve to accommodate the amount of flesh that you kind of have above your bicep line there. So sometimes if you make this cap height too narrow, it will start to borrow measurement from your bodice. So that's something to consider. If your bodice armhole is correct and your sleeve head is still tight, chances are your cap is a little bit too narrow and then it's just a matter of adding a little bit width to it to your sleeve at this particular area. Now you want to be definitely check your sleeve and to see how much ease it does have. So I always like to walk the sleeve whether you've drafted, drafted the sleeve yourself or you're using a commercial pattern. It's always a really good practice to actually determine how much ease you have in your sleeve head. So I already do have a video which I'll link to below about how to walk your sleeve um, because it actually shows it in full scale. But I want to just quickly show you here walking the sleeve of the front armhole here. So from the base of your armhole at the side seam and of course the sleeve at the underarm seam they are going to match. So what I want you to do is walk your sleeve and as I said you're going to notice here that the shape of the curves of the sleeve and the front armhole generally match quite closely. They will veer away of course at one point but you can see it almost matches exactly to the notch. Again you're always walking your sleeve as if you're sewing it so I've got right sides together. As you walk your sleeve, you can just pivot it along the seam line here and you can just keep going until you meet the shoulder seam. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to come to a point where the shoulder seam ends. So I'm going to just make a little mark there and what this is going to do is tell me that I from that I have definitely have ease because the notch that belongs to this shoulder line actually is here. But let's see how much. We're gonna do the same thing on the back side of the sleeve. And once again, you're gonna notice here that the curve of the armhole isn't exactly the same on the back side. And again, that's simply because you have ease at the back side of your sleeve. So I'm gonna just walk and pivot along the seam line until I get to my notches, making sure that my notches match exactly. And I'm going to continue around until I get to the top part of the back armhole. And this is going to give me some indication of how much ease that there is in this particular sleeve head. So you can see here that I have definitely ease. I want you to just take note here that the ease amount that you have has to be divided evenly into two. So if your front armhole ends here and your back armhole ends here, your notch position that is going to be matched to your shoulder line is going to be smack in between the two. This will distribute the ease evenly between the front and back of your sleeve head. So in other words, you're going to have a half inch or 1.25 centimeters um, eased into the back side of the sleeve and 1.25 centimeters eased into the front side of the sleeve. So that's a definitely a great 
uh, practice to do when you are checking your sleeve to see how well it corresponds to your armhole. Now let's take a look at this particular sleeve set into the bodice and we'll take a look at what you can look for for fitting your sleeve actually on the sample. Okay, so now that we know what a good sleeve looks like on paper, let's take a look at what a good sleeve might look like on the body or attached to a bodice. So I have here, Maureen's gonna help me out with this. This is the basic bodice block that I teach in my bodice block course. And this is also the sleeve that goes with that particular bodice block. So I wanna just kind of go through um, what to look for when you're fitting a sleeve. So the first thing that you're gonna see is that the center line of the sleeve sleeve is actually splitting the arm in half. Now that should be happening in any sleeve draft that you do or even if you're using a commercial pattern. The bicep line is going to intersect that line at a 90 degree angle. That's what you're looking for. So you're going to notice that it's not actually hanging perpendicular to the floor. It's actually hanging parallel to the arm and the bicep line is hanging perpendicular to that center line. So that's something to consider. So the reason that you need to do that is because your arm actually pitches forward. What you'll find is if that center line is actually parallel to the floor, you'll probably get really a lot of wrinkles at the front of your elbow there. Okay, so you want it to look like that. Now there are some wrinkles that are showing on this sleeve and I consider this sleeve a good fitting sleeve. So the first ones I want to just indicate to you are the easing little wrinkles here. This being 100% cotton muslin fabric, it's quite rigid fabric, you will often see these subtle wrinkles here when you have a set in sleeve like this that sits really high up on the shoulder like this. The other thing that you're gonna notice here is that there are some drag lines pointing up toward the cap here. Now, in this case, this is not really a problem. This is a woven sleeve and what this is doing actually, it keeps the cap height a little bit more shallow than the entire um, armhole depth in order to create some excess fabric here at the underarm length here. So this excess fabric that you hear, actually allows you to raise your arm. So it actually allows you to raise your arm without lifting up your entire bodice. So in other words, the excess fabric that you need to lift your arm is coming from your sleeve, not your bodice. So that's really a fine point that I think most uh, tutorials will probably miss. So even though this appears like there's gonna be uh, sort of drag lines pointing up to the cap, it's going to help you actually move your arm. So that's when you know that those wrinkles are okay. Now there's another set of wrinkles here which are at the front of the elbow here. So you can kind of see that there's probably a little bit of extra length at the front of the arm. And that's simply because the measurement for the sleeve length is taken at the back of the arm, which is automatically going to allow for the extra length you need to go over the the more curvy part of your arm, which is at the back of the arm, but it doesn't accommodate for the the length that you need at the front, meaning there's going to be excess length at the front part of your arm at the elbow. So often you'll see after you wear a straight sleeve like this one that you'll have wrinkles at the arm, which will actually kind of pull everything up. So if I actually pin this up, you'll see that if you if you just make a small pattern alteration, which I'll talk about in another time, um, you can actually um, eliminate that extra length. And that is really how a two-piece sleeve is created. So in other words, you're, you're changing the length of the front part of the sleeve so that the so that you kind of can eliminate these extra wrinkles here. So what happens when you eliminate that length is, is you'll find that the pitch of the center line actually pitches forward below the elbow. Now this is what allows you to have a really nice smooth fit on a two piece sleeve. But since this is a one piece sleeve, by all means, it's okay to have a little bit of wrinkling at the front of your arm there. So you'll see that your sleeve isn't twisting at all. So when you have that extra fabric, you might think that it's twisting on you, but it's really not. It's just this extra length that is present at the front of the arm, which you actually need in a straight sleeve like this. 
Okay, so those are the things that I wanted to point out on the body to look for that it's okay if you have some wrinkles and drag lines on your sleeve in those cases. Because what's more important in a, in a sleeve is that you can actually move in it. You have to be able to lift your arms and move them forward and rotate them because obviously we have dynamic bodies and we do dynamic things every single day so if you don't have some wrinkles in your clothing chances are it's going to be very very rigid and very difficult and uncomfortable during the day for you to wear them if you found this video helpful in some way let me know i'd love to hear your thoughts and insights so please comment below next week we'll continue the conversation about sleeves with an example of a sleeve that isn't quite working and some suggestions for the pattern alterations that might help improve the fit. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.